Hi, I'm Ron Netter, and welcome to another edition of Tech Bytes with Ron Netter. In this episode, we're going to talk about using Ansible to manage your smart home. And yes, that is exactly what we're going to do, because if you've not heard of Ansible, hang on, this is going to get interesting. Now, what we're talking about is going to be very easy to do, and it's going to be multi-platform. That's, that's the best thing of all. What you're going to see here, the content is also available as an Amazon flash briefing or podcast. Please go to techbyteswithronnutter.com for more information for any items mentioned in this episode. There are affiliate links in the description. If you click on these links, I will get a small commission, but that won't affect the price that you're going to pay. If you haven't already subscribed to the channel, please click on subscribe now and enable notifications. If this video helps you or provides value, please click on the like button, thumbs up. Now, here's what we're going to be talking about. We're going to be working with something called Ansible. Now, if you've not heard of this, don't worry about it because especially if you're pursuing a Cisco certification or your Linux admin, this is a tool you really need to have. Now, we're going to be using this primarily with the Raspberry Pi and it's that low of a footprint. Trust me, you're going to like this because the interesting thing is this is cross platform. Now I'm running it on a Raspberry Pi and a 3B. So, I mean, it's not exactly a screamer of a performance. Doesn't have to be. This is what's called a push situation. Normally with application management situations, you have to have what's called an agent or some software on the machine systems you're going to manage. Okay. That's yet one more thing you have to keep updated yet. One more thing that could break. And this is where Ansible really is handy. Now there are two versions of Ansible. There's the uh, open source one that we're working with. And then there's the paid one, which this is owned by Red Hat, which is owned by IBM. If you keep all the, the lineage straight. So if you, don't you don't have to worry about getting getting them the the commercial version because this is something that you can do readily and when i say it's cross-platform now yes we're showing a raspberry pi but if you notice i've got an intel nook here windows it can manage that and it can help automate some commands if you've got a cisco router or switch there's a good chance you could do it. basically anything with an SSH interface you're going to be able to, to get into. And there are, there's two ways you can run the commands. You can either run them from command line or you can use what's called a playbook. And playbook is basically a collection of scripts. So we're going to go through and work with the different options. And this is just basically an, an intro to get started because there is so much you can do with it. I mean, I could do a video all day long and we still would not be able to touch everything. So we're going to show some very simple options to get you started so that you know you don't get overwhelmed by this. And I'm still learning a lot and I'm going to be asking for your help towards the end of the video because this can be a win-win for everybody concerned because if we all help each other, then we're all going to be in a much better place. So let's shift over here to the interface and I'm going to drop my lower third now to get this started and I've got to switch over here to a keyboard. We'll do sudo apt get Ansible and something called SSH pass. Now Ansible is actually going to do well. Now what did I not do right here? Okay. Ansible SS. Oh, because I didn't tell it one important thing. That's what happens when I'm trying to type and talk at the same time. It's like walking and chewing bubble gum. Doesn't always work. Now, to get this started, I'm logged in to my Raspberry Pi 3B. And we'll do sudo because we've got to basically make it think that we're a higher level user. Even though I'm only coming in as Pi, there are certain commands that sudo is going to help you run the way they need to. Then apt get. That's going to tell it there's some modules we need to go get. Install is going to tell it we want to install and then Ansible and SSH pass. Now, Ansible is going to be the workhorse of this. We have to have SSH pass so that we can pass passwords to the system we're trying to control at the far end or not the far end, but at the other end or wherever it is on your network. As you can see, this doesn't take that long to put together. 
And like Thomas the Tank Engine, I think I can, I think I can. I said, this is on a Raspberry Pi 3B. Now, the reason I got looking at this is I've already got a collection of four Raspberry Pis. Number five, well, you're seeing number five right there, and I, I've got to make this thing more manageable. So you can see it's already up and running. So I'm going to switch over here on my smartphone because there's a couple of commands I want to make sure that I get. So first we're going to do is we're going to change into the ETC Ansible directory. Now, when you first go in, there's only two files you should see. And if you're not familiar with the command, you should that at LS is the equivalent of doing dir in Windows or, or in DOS. There are two commands you can see. You should see an Ansible CFG and you should see a host file. Now, in an, we'll go into Ansible CFG first. So sudo nano ansible.cfg. If I could spell sudo right, you know, uh, maybe in the next version of uh, Raspbian, they can uh, put in some artificial intelligence. Now, there, as you can see, there's a whole lot of options to uh, to work with here and we're going to go down here a little bit and this is one that's going to be kind of important to to have in place oh here we go right past it you will want to take out the pound sign in front of the host underscore key underscore checking entry because we don't want it trying to check keys it's it, trust me it's not something you have, you have to worry about at this point so once you've got that changed then you'll do a control x and since we hadn't changed anything it it popped us right out. Now, the other thing to do, no, not sudo edit, sudo nano hosts, is you're going to have to go into this file, and we're going to do just a very basic install. And that way, this is not going to get real crazy, and we're going to do another video, or I'm going to do another video with you to where we can account for differences in logins, between the different systems because that's possibly going to happen. So let's scroll down here in the file. Now, let me explain a few things here. You see the section here called RPI. That is simply a label that can be anything you want it to be. Now, for example, right now, I'm only controlling this with Raspberry Pis. So that's just why I called it RPI. Eventually, that's going to be changed. But that was just to get me up and running. So if we go, well, wrong camera here. So if we go back over here, and then you'll see these next two lines are the IP addresses. Now, you probably could do fully qualified domain name if you're running internal DNS. I just went for the IP address. That was the easy way to take care of it. Now, the next section here is called RPI, and that RPI has to match this section right up here. Otherwise, it's not going to help you. And then colon VARS. Now, this is where you specify your login credentials. Now, it's going to use the same set of login credentials for everything that is in under this RPI section. So we'll, we're going to talk about in another video why you would want to make a separate one, and we'll go through it. But this is just to get you up and running and kind of get you comfortable with what's going on. So again, at this point, you're set, ready to go. So I'll exit out. So to get things running, and you know, we've already seen, okay, we've got to go change the Ansible config file and change just that one entry. And then you go in and set up the host file. And you can set up just one system to start with. That, that's not a, a big deal. Now, to show you what this can do, say you want to, well, we'll start out with something. We'll, we'll start out with ping. Okay. So to ping, it's going to be a little bit different. So it'll be Ansible, uh, okay, RPI. dash M. And that's a command line switch for saying we're going into a module and we will do ping. Now, here's the advantage of this. You can now ping multiple systems. You don't have to ping them individually by address, and you can see it's already come back here, and it says, where you says ping, and it got back pong. So it thinks the connection is good at that point, the system's responding. So if you if you have problems getting in to one of your Raspberry Pis because you've got to update some modules or make a configuration change, this is a very handy command to have available. Now, another thing to look at, and if you are just getting into Linux, this is a command that's going to be good to have. There is a file called messages. It's under forward slash var 
forward slash log forward slash messages. And this is kind of a running log to varying degrees, depending on how you got something set as to what's going on with the Raspberry Pi or Linux in general. So what we're going to do in this point is Ansible. And then we'll go RPI dash M. And this time we're running a command. And we'll want this all in, well, I just want to pay in a double quote because we're going to have a space in the middle of this. And we all know what spaces do when you're trying to type things and it's not expecting it. Okay. Now we'll hit enter on that. And what did I not do right here? Okay, Ansible dash M. Oh, I forgot something. See, it's amazing how well this works. I had I was reading my notes at an angle, and that was my first mistake. So dash A is we're going to pass an argument to it. So the argument is this whole command. So we'll do that. Now you'll see a difference in output. And there's things you can do. You can pre-check your scripts before you run them and everything. Now it's going through and displaying. And let's go back up here. And we're going to look. No, don't want to run that one again. Okay, so now we'll go up here. And if you see, it actually ran the first system and displayed the commands. And then it showed the commands off of the second system. And it always starts off with the IP address of the host. Now that's where if you did have FQTN, fully, qual fully qualified domain name, you say that fast three times and not get into trouble. Uh, that's where this would be a little bit better for you. Now, this is always going to change. So this is a file that's, you know, at least you can see a, a snapshot at that point in time. Now, that's how you do it from the command line. But how much, I don't know if you're like me, but I don't always remember all the command lines. And this is where the playbook comes into example. And let's go to sudo nano. And the one I've got in there is log.yml. And it's something called YAML. And that is, it's just, I've, I, there's a variety of abbreviations I've heard for, but basically it's yet another markup language, which, hey, as long as it works, I don't care what they call it. Now, here's the syntax that you're going to have in this. Now, theoretically, you should start the YAML file with three dashes. I've not done that in some cases and not seen a problem, but it's good to follow best practices. And then we will go down here and do uh, dash hosts. And this is where we have that section called RPI, or we could quote an individual host. Again, I'm just giving a very broad overview of what's possible with this, and we'll, we'll kind of tie things into a bow here in just a second now tasks if you're going to have multiple tasks it's entirely possible that you would this way you can name them or a comment or description like you're used to with batch files or or uh, programming now shell at this point we're going to say tail space forward slash var log messages and you see this time we didn't have to put it in quotes because it understands that there's going to be some spacing in there so that is how you get that running. So now we've got a, a command that's going to be a little bit different. So we'll do Ansible playbook log.yml. This is the only time you'll have to call the playbook command when you're wanting to run the playbooks because the regular Ansible command is not going to understand that. So we'll just hit enter and it's going to run the file and you'll see it. Sometimes, it, depending on on the Raspberry Pi, it may take it a second or two to come back, and you'll see where it's saying it's going through, and it's saying, okay, I'm talking to these systems, and it says task changed, and I'll explain that here in just a second, and then it does a recap saying at this point, it has gone through, it's looked at the file, and changed one, said there were changes in the file from the last time it knew about it. So that's going to be normal. So, and that's, this is, I'm still working, learning some of these commands. So there is one site you'll want to go to. It's docs.ansible.com. And that is the, all the online documentation. But be careful when you do that because you'll want to make sure that you're telling it the right version of 
Ansible and see we're running 2.7.7. There is a 2.9 out there. I'm not going to that version because it's not natively available from the repositories I'm set up for. So you want to make sure when you're going to docs.ansible.com that you reference 2.7 when you're looking for the different commands because some of the commands are phrased or can be phrased differently between the different versions. Right now, this is doing everything I could expect, and I'm barely scratching the surface. So this is where I'm going to ask for your help, and we can help each other. I'm going to be going through in the coming weeks different commands. The, one of the standard things I want to do whenever I'm setting up a Raspberry Pi is make sure I've got all the updates applied. Well, I'm working on a script that will do that and then give you the feedback. I've got the script running, but it's the feedback, on-screen feedback, that I'm not seeing. Also, setting up NTP so that you've got it in the right time zone, that you've got it referencing the right time servers. That is also something that I'm working on. If you've got some ideas, let me know what you'd like to try. And if you want to try it and you get it to work, then in another video, I'll, I'll be sure to mention your name and, and we'll put a copy of the script out there that you've got been running because the challenge I'm finding in getting this all to work is that there is a there's different styles of doing it and not everybody's doing it on the Raspberry Pi. So that's where I want to make sure that we can maybe between all of us, we can come up with a set of scripts that we say, Hey, this does this, this does this. And we know it works on the Raspberry Pi because there I've seen some syntax difference because I'll cut and paste a playbook that supposedly works. And the Raspberry Pi on my end is just throwing errors all over the place. But that's something else we're going to go into in the coming videos is showing you how to do some troubleshooting with it showing the different commands where you can kind of do a, a pre-check of the script and help it find or help it tell you if there's any errors. And sometimes it's just going to be a case of trial by error. We're going to get into some of the Linux commands. Uh, there's going to be CP, which is copy. So you do CP space, the name you're working with and the name you want it to copy to. And then you've got MV, which is like rename. Again, this is all things that there's there's so much that this can do. And like I said, I've already got four Raspberry Pis, and you've seen number five sitting there waiting in the wings. And individually SSHing into all of them is becoming a real pain. And I was looking for something that would help me solve that pain. And Ansible, I think, is going to be the trick. So you've you've seen how to what it takes to get Ansible up and running. And before you make changes to any script, I would always make a backup copy because there's not really an undo once you saved it. But it's, again, let's take it one step at a time and we hope maybe kind of build our own script repository for this, then I could, we can help each other out. Now, if you're watching this on YouTube, you're going to see videos to the right or to the left, which are next steps to other ones I've produced or something else that you've watched. If this video helps you or provides value, please click on that like button, thumbs up. If you haven't already subscribed to the channel, please click on subscribe and enable notifications. We'll see you in the next video. Take care.